hey guys what we're going to do today is we're going to dual boot ubuntu and windows 11 together so that you can use whichever the os you want so go ahead and click on your web browser now type in ubuntu accept but good what you did then click on download ubuntu desktop now click download 24.0.4 LTS that's the version we're going to be installing so it's the video save as and download it to the desktop for easy access actually now the next thing that we need is a live ubuntu iso to be burned into a usb so we're going to use a tool called rufus so search for Rufus on Google and then you should be able to go to the first link in there. Click the first one and save as. Put it to the same location desktop so it's easy for you guys to access. Now those two files are the ones that we need. Now what we're going to do is we have to see if we have secure boot enabled or disabled on the PC. So we'll have to find it by searching for system information on the start menu. And you should see something called secure boot status on, which means that needs to be disabled in the BIOS before we dual boot it. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well later on. Yep. So if you look at our mic, computer this pc part you should be able to shrink that device sorry shrink that drive into half so that you can install ubuntu as a partition in there so go ahead and open start menu type in disk you should be able to see something called create and format hard disk select that and then c drive is where windows is installed so that's the drive you're going to be shrinking so right click on that click on shrink volume so it's shown in megabytes so you need to specify how much space you need ubuntu to take Gee. so it requires 25 gb minimum i'm gonna give 30 there so 30,000 megabytes and hit shrink now the c is where windows is installed and the unallocated part is where we are going to be installing Ubuntu and the other part healthy recovery partition over there don't touch that that's a part of Windows so leave, let it be there close that I'm sure. and now you gotta wait until this download is completed so I'm just gonna fast forward to it Open Rufus while the download is happening. Now click yes. And then that's the application where we're going to be using to live port a USB. So you will need a USB drive that is at least 8 gigs in size. So I have a 64 GB one. So I'm going to insert that into the laptop. You see? I've inserted mine all to you. So you make sure that you back up anything inside the drive. I know. Now, next, what you need to do is you'll have to select the ISO. So you need to wait for the download to finish. That should be done now. Yep. Now close it and click on select. Now select desktop and open to ISO that you downloaded. Now, once everything is set up, you don't have to change anything. Click on next, ready, and write it in ISO most. Now, make sure you back up before you hit OK on that. If not, it will erase everything on the drive. Uh, yeah. Now, wait until the process is complete. Hit, hit. I'm gonna fast forward so that you guys know what to do after that. Alright, next. I got you, thank you. No. Now, once it's ready, hit close. 
quickly you could you should be able to see the drive named as ubuntu that's the lifeboat usb that we are going to be using now you have to restart into the bio settings so for that you press and hold your shift key and then while holding you click on the restart now let's just wait and see now on your advanced starting page what you're gonna do is click on the club cover sheet and then click on advanced options then you select UEFI firmware settings and click restart. Now inside your UEFI firmware settings, what you're gonna do is find where secure board is. It's usually under security. Could be different on your bios but then you can figure it out easily from where all the secure settings are and you go ahead and disable that and after that you can go ahead and save into startup or in your case it could be boot so once you go into you see the boot mode quick i'm just going Leave it like that so here if you don't have legacy you make sure you have book or legacy turned on as well actually you could do it with the ueff fa1 now you can select boot and you see boot manager is the first that is the cause for you to keep booting into windows so what you're gonna do is bring ubuntu to the top you're gonna do that by pressing you're gonna do that by pressing on the f5 or F6 to bring it up. So F6 is the one that brings Ubuntu to the top. And once that is done, you escape, escape, and exit saving changes. Yes. So that should boot you up directly into Ubuntu Einstein without having to enter any key combinations. So guys, once you enter your Ubuntu boot screen, so I had a few issues booting from the live USB because I had a specific option enabled on my uh, laptop. So if you just bring up your USB device to the top, it should just work for you guys. So what you're gonna do is hit try and install Ubuntu. Once you boot into the Ubuntu screen, you just go ahead and do that. And the next thing you're going to do is just wait for it. Don't press anything. It should start loading up after a while based on how fast your USB drive is. Now, well, there you go. It's starting to boot up. It's going to take a while to load the screen because it's just extracting the files that it's needed that is needed for the booting up so once it's there you should be able to see the screen of ubuntu where you get an option to either try ubuntu or install ubuntu so give it time to prepare itself now most of the process is just as it is you go ahead click next next you select your keyboard layout there hit next and now you can enter your Wi-Fi password. It's always better to connect to the network so that Ubuntu can download any required drivers. I'm just gonna enter that. Once you connect to the internet, hit next. And now you can either try Ubuntu or install. We're going to go ahead and install Ubuntu. 
now you select interactive installation and then you go ahead with the default selection so these two options are to install all the additional graphic drivers and supported drivers for your laptop so i would suggest that you go ahead and select them and then you go ahead for the next option now you see install ubuntu alongside windows boot manager you can choose your operating system during boot so you can either do that or you can select to do a custom installation or you can erase the whole disk and install ubuntu from scratch so i'm going to go ahead and to install ubuntu alongside windows boot now type in the details So once you type in your details, you can go ahead and click next, choose your time zone and then you can see the partitions out here. So now this should let you install based on the partitions. So I'm just going to go ahead and click next. Now you just wait for the whole process to complete and then follow the instructions on the screen. So now that the installation is complete, you can go ahead and click on restart now. Now Ubuntu will run a few commands and let you know when to remove the USB. Now you see it's asking you to remove the installation medium. So you remove it and then hit enter. So if you guys like the video so far please do like and subscribe it helps me a lot to make new more videos now you just finish and go through the process and as you can see ubuntu is a very lightweight very powerful operating system so you get all the features that you get in windows you just need to know how to use it so feel free to Take the time to understand and see how things are. Now to erase Ubuntu, all you have to do is go into create and format hard disk on your start menu. And then you see the partition that we created. You right click on that and click on delete. And then you right click on the C drive and click on extend volume. So in my case, I've already erased Ubuntu. So that's why it's showing black for you. It should be in blue color. So you can right click, delete. And after that, you can right click on the C drive and then extend volume, click next, next and finish. That's it guys. Now to bring back your Windows boot up bit, just like before. And if you've decided not to use Ubuntu anymore, you head into boot and you bring up the Windows boot manager to the by using F6 now you exit saving changes and yes that should get you back into your Windows boot manager so you can boot directly into Windows from now on thanks for watching guys like and subscribe please